Hello, uh, my name is Ifti Islam. I'm the uh, managing partner at HMTI Capital Partners. And today I want to talk about uh, financial sector reforms in Bangladesh. After a significant losing streak, uh, although by a much smaller extent than other markets in Asia, uh, the Bangladesh stock market appears to have stabilized for now. There appears to have been significant discussion amongst the regulatory authorities about the main institutional players, uh, such as merchant banks, and how they can help stop the market falling. We think there are a number of interesting issues that come up from the current debate on Bangladesh and what, and what is driving the fundamentals of the equity market. Um, but we would ask a more fundamental question, which is, should the investing public and institutional investors more generally hold either the finance advisor or indeed the regulatory authorities responsible for the correction uh, of the market or, or indeed the valuation of equities more generally? Is this a role that they feel they want to take? Uh, and I think there are some fundamental issues about the role of the regulators in the stock market. Before discussing this, we wanted to just highlight uh, 10 key observations on the role of the stock market and the role of regulators. Firstly, the stock market should be one of the primary mechanisms by which savers or investors, those with excess capital, provide financing to companies who have a capital deficit. One way we think about considering the valuation of an individual stock is as a claim on the future earnings of a company discount for the value of time. A second consideration is that the level of stock is also affected by broad liquidity conditions in the economy, the level of interest rates, and the macroeconomic outlook. The amount of leverage in the system also affects valuations. Uh, note the impact of deleveraging currently on the uh, uh, from bank, bank balance sheets uh, in Western markets as a result of the subprime crisis. In the context of Bangladesh, Increasing leverage or, or, or reducing leverage is largely affected by adjusting uh, bank margin ratios. Another important issue is that the level of individual stocks will vary with investor expectations on the prospects for individual companies' earnings as well as the sector overall. A well-functioning financial system should also see equity investors playing an important role in terms of market discipline are rewarding companies with good earnings or transparent balance sheets, strong dividend growth, punishing those co companies who misuse or ineffectively use capital. If the stock market is working effectively, it should also reward those companies with good corporate governance, openness and transparency, with a premium in terms of P ratios, and punish companies with inaccurate, who publish inaccurate information, uh, which will result in them having a lower P ratio than more transparent companies in the market. A sixth consideration is that an important role for stock market regulators is to ensure that there is transparency and a level playing field in the market, and that either companies or large investors do not trade on inside information. In an increasingly complex market, this requires substantial investment in market monitoring technology for the SEC. Regulators also need to ensure that companies that raise capital in the market for the first time in IPO do so on the basis of honest and accurate information. A company's finance and balance sheet, as well as a current future prospects, uh, should form the basis for the valuation of the IPO. A key role for market regulators as well should also be to ensure that companies' ongoing reporting of their financial results are honest and transparent so that investors can take an informed decision. A final two considerations should be that regulators should ensure there is not excessive market volatility and that there is sufficient liquidity in times of crisis. They also need to ensure a healthy secondary market in more normal times, and that can be achieved by establishing a broader investor, institutional investor base, as well as greater foreign market participation. The issue of whether uh, central banks and stock market regulators should try and affect asset price uh, values and uh, attempt to preempt uh, asset price bubbles developing is very topical at the moment with respect to the Federal Reserve. There's been a lot of debate the Jackson Hole Conference about whether the Fed should or should not intervene to uh, prevent the housing or an equity bubble from developing. Um, but the experience in 2008 of China, India, Vietnam and many other markets where stock prices have fallen very, very sharply uh, suggests that the ability of uh, central banks or regulators to sustainably control the level of a, of a stock market is quite limited. Uh, ultimately, the stock market is de determined by uh, the decisions of thousands or tens of thousands of investors 
uh, who all individually form an opinion. And art artificial intervention, uh, or keeping a market artificially high, uh, is, is a very risky strategy. Uh, if there is a correction later on when the, when the market ultimately um, converges to its fundamental value, that market correction can be more severe, which could potentially hurt investors to a greater extent than allowing a more natural uh, move towards lower towards a fundamental valuation. So I think the issue of regulatory intervention in markets is, is a, a very complex one. McKinsey have done uh, uh, a very extensive survey uh, back in 2002 of both stock market regulators and also private sector investors. And one of the things that McKinsey noticed is that emerging market governance reform had not progressed in emerging markets as significantly as um, we would hope. Uh, and secondly, McKinsey noted the importance of family-owned businesses in many emerging markets. Without incentives for those family-owned businesses to change, they would continue to act as an obstacle to reform. We would highlight that institutional reform can help transform family-owned businesses, particularly those managing the difficult transition between generations, uh, and will offer alternative financing uh, created by reforms that give access to private equity or to public equity markets. If emerging market businesses remain unconvinced about the governance for reformers in their interests, they will continue to oppose that. So we think that um, this process of convincing family owners of businesses is very, very important. Perhaps the most effective way to encourage family owned businesses to change is for such change to be gradual and we shouldn't expect radical change. We think a more holistic perspective on corporate governance suggests that fundamental institutional reform is needed to support corporate level change. Such reform could provide a platform for encouraging emerging market companies to reform their government practices. We would go on and say that a more fundamental reform to enhance value could look beyond corporate governance to include such levels as efficient financial linkages to global markets, as well as legal and regulatory leverage that utilizes more favorable environments for conducting business. Coming on to a more recent development, and that is the issue of uh, ensuring uh, honest and regular reporting of accounts, uh, we would highlight that uh, if balance is to develop as an effective capital market where valuations are driven by economic and corporate fundamentals, it's important for regulators to ensure that companies report genuine financials on a timely and systematic basis. Any lack of transparency or honest accounts will undermine both investor confidence and the effective functioning of the market. If there is great fundamental research in the marketplace, Bangladesh clearly needs to develop a framework to avoid analyst conflicts of interest. And we think that this fundamental research is important to avoid the market remaining speculative and news driven. The United States, the largest and most sophisticated economy and capital market in the world, suffered accounting scandals in 2002, which as a result, WorldCom and Enron uh, went bankrupt. WorldCom overstated their earnings by $3.9 billion and Enron uh, by a similar amount. And as a result, Congress passed the Sarbanes-Oxley Act, uh, popularly known as SOX. Uh, and some of the key aspects of the Sarbanes-Oxley uh, legislation was the, was the uh, creation of a public, accounting, public company accounting oversight board, which oversees company auditors, uh, legislation for auditor independence, uh, corporate responsibility for ensuring um, genuine accounts, increase and enhance financial disclosures, and also rules to ensure that there are reduced analyst conflicts of interest, Chinese walls between analysts and, and, and uh, investment banking areas, greater resources for the Securities and Exchange Commission in the US, and again, uh, criminal, uh, corporate and criminal fraud accountability, so uh, both CEOs of companies and their auditors uh, will be held criminally liable if there is any fraud in their accounts. We think that uh, a Sarbanes-Oxley type legislation for Bangladesh would be extremely valuable. Certainly the arrival of the Gramophone IPO and the prospects for a number of large IPOs in the part of the telecoms, privatization, infrastructure are all good news for the development of capital markets in Bangladesh. But more significant progress in corporate governance and accounting transparency is an important objective for both the current and the next government. We're convinced that following through with uh, a uh, Sarbanes-Oxley type legislation in Bangladesh, we yield significant rewards for the capital markets. 
as the benefits of corporate governance become self-evident to family members of family-owned businesses, we hope they become convinced of the need for such reforms. We, find, we would conclude that um, signs that a wider range of family-owned businesses can throw off their cautious stance towards governance reform and are the primary agents of change capital markets is likely to be a major catalyst for foreign investors to come to Bangladesh, which in turn will lay the foundations for a more effective access to finance for companies in Bangladesh and hence a higher growth trajectory for the economy. This is FG Islam. Thank you very much for listening to our observations on financial reforms in Bangladesh. Thank you.